Okay. Last time that we were talking about stuff, we were talking about the Tang and Song dynasties. And we were talking mainly just about the Tang dynasty. We haven't gotten to the Song yet, so we are just talking about the Tang dynasty last time. And when we were talking about it, we talked about how they had to take tests to see who gets to move on into the government. And we talked about how their military is based more on militias, talked about how their revenue system was based on a land tax, and how they had monopoly control the government did over several commodities, items, that allowed them to then make money, further money, for the government. So we're going to talk about some technological inventions that happened during the time period of the Tang Dynasty. The first one that's most important, actually, let's make a bullet first. Let's make a bullet and write down the word technology. So bullet technology. So you see here on the list of technologies, uh, cast iron, uh, that was been used for like pots, right? So when you hear cast iron, that, that's like a pot, like a cooking pot. Uh, crossbow was invented by this time period. The main one to write down first, though, is our gunpowder. So make a one and write down gunpowder. So gunpowder was kind of the first one that's important that was invented. Uh, the picture down here in the bottom left-hand corner, that is gunpowder from this time period. Gunpowder nowadays is kind of like a fine, looks kind of like a black sand. But gunpowder at this time period would have been a very uh, clumpy together. So they would have kind of looked like raisins uh, kind of clumped up together. That's kind of what gunpowder looked like at this time period. Uh, they didn't quite have it down to a fine powder yet. Another invention that was pretty important at this time period was the compass. Make it two and write down compass. So the compass was also a pretty important invention at this time period. It allowed you to tell, you know, where north was so you could figure out where north was. However, the Chinese didn't really use the compass to figure out where north was was like for navigation by boats or anything. Instead, they mainly used the compass for aligning their buildings to the north. So mainly what the compass was used for is just trying to get buildings aligned to the north. Uh, so that way, yeah, so there's there was aligned buildings to the north. That's what they used them for. Uh, three, porcelain, three, porcelain. Porcelain is kind of the next thing that was a major invention for the Chinese. Uh, porcelain, if you don't know quite what that is, uh, that's what toilets are made out of. All right, that's porcelain. So it's a very kind of a slick surface. Uh, you can also make dowels out of porcelain as well. So you hear about porcelain dowels. There you go. So you can also make dowels out of porcelain. It was used a lot of times as kind of like pottery and so forth. That's what it was used for a lot of the time. They also, during the Tang Dynasty, came up with coal as fuel. Uh, if you remember, coal is compressed plant fibers. So that's why they burn good, because they're compressed plant fibers. That's mainly what coal was, compressed plant fibers. Water wheels are also developed this time period. A water wheel will be, um, you probably have seen these before in pictures, but there'll be like a building, and then there's a wheel next to that building, and there's like a river running next to it, and that wheel is turning in the water and so water wheel and usually in that building when that wheel is turning it's turning something inside that building so it might be something that crushes grain for example so you can actually get out stuff from it um or it's some type of other thing that you're using the power of the wheel to do something usually for crushing grain and so forth like it moves kind of like a uh kind of moves like a stone on the inside that's like a rolly stone that kind of looks it's a wheel uh, stone wheel and it rolls around on a uh, stone pedestal and it kind of crushes stuff as it goes around it. That's usually what kind of it's used for. Next one, uh, paper currency was also developed at this time period. You go to make a four and write down paper currency. So four paper currency. So paper currency was also developed at this time period. Um, we talk about how coins. We talked about that kind before, about how coins were kind of developed. But coins are pretty heavy. You know, they have a lot of weight to them. Paper, on the other hand, much lighter. And you can make the paper currency worth however much you want it to be worth. You know, it could be $10, 100 you know, 1000 So you can make paper currency worth what you want it to be. Uh, in the United States, side note, the highest dollar, dollar bill that you can have is a $100 bill. 
You, know, you can't, can't have anything beyond 100. Any case, so back to paper currency. So paper currency allowed people to have less weight that they're traveling with. So instead of having, you know, like a, several pounds of like coins, instead you can just have, you know, a couple ounces of paper. So it's just lighter weight. And a lot of people kind of move stuff more. Uh, wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow, that's kind of, oh, you don't need to write down wheelbarrow. Uh, wheelbarrow is got the next thing to talk about. Wheelbarrow uh, just being, uh, you know, you have two wheels and then you have like a stopping point. And you can like put stuff into the, it's not really a, it's not like a barrel, but it's kind of a flat sled with two wheels on it. And then you have like a metal bar that you could kind of pick up on it. Uh, let me show you a picture. So this makes more sense. Yeah, wheel. Yeah, so there you go, it's a wheelbarrow. All right. So you have your wheel there in front, and you kind of have your part in back. Now, what we want, particularly though, is a Chinese wheelbarrow. There we go. So again, got your wheel in front, and you got your two parts in back, and you just kind of pick it up and you can move it. So that one has a single wheel. Um, there's also one with a double beat, double wheel. So there's a double wheel and such. Yeah, so that that's a Chinese wheelbarrow. And then wallpaper was also invented at this time period as well. All right, new bullet expansion, new bullet expansion. So the Chinese, they start to expand out their area. So they're no longer, you know, just in one area in China. They're starting to kind of expand out and go to different places. And one of the things they start doing is that at this point in time, they can start traveling overseas. So at this point in time, they actually have the ability to be able to travel across water, uh, the ocean water anyway, so they can travel across rough seas and so forth. And they can actually start to trade with other people. So they're doing a lot of overseas trade. Go ahead and make a one and write down overseas trade. Overseas trade. So they're starting to do overseas trade and they're starting to move uh, items from China across the water over to other places like Korea or go down the coastline to like Vietnam. So they were kind of move things uh, around. So they kind of move stuff. There's a couple of places that they end up conquering or taking over. So we're going to write down, I want to change that word. We're going to write down conquered. So we're going to make a two. And we're going to write down conquered. And then we're going to write down North Vietnam, Xinjiang, and Southern Manchuria. So they are going to go out and they are going to conquer a couple of areas. And you might be seeing on here what calls Korea a tributary state. Um, a tributary state, you don't need to write down, but a tributary state is basically like, hey, you need to pay us money or we're going to attack you. That's a tributary state. So a tributary state is someone who simply pays tribute money to another nation not to attack them. So that's what that means. This map right here just kind of shows the areas that the Chinese control. So you see they hold all this area here in purple. And then you see like there's this jet out over here at the side. I'll, I'll explain this little jet out here. Um, what happens is that the Chinese do push out over to this way um, in the 750s. Now they had control of this area kind of before at one point in time, this desert area, um, because they were trying to get some really good horses that were like over here. Uh, it's not quite my map. But there was like a there was a kingdom way over here that had like some really good horses that the Chinese wanted and they wouldn't give them the horses. So China went for the desert and conquered it. Um, that was back kind of during the Greek uh, time periods, kind of like after the Greeks and so forth. So it was kind of a little bit kind of after that. But they did all they did come through this area quite a bit and kind of have control of it. And this is kind of a big area. So you see how it kind of how big it is. And you have the rest of China. But there's not really much out here. You know, controlling this area isn't really too hard because the population is pretty low. A lot more people live over here 
you know, you're talking like a hundred times more people over here than over here. So then maybe the same size, but population wise, there's not many people live over there and therefore not too hard to control. Really. Okay. We're going to stop there for today.